We got something really different and I'm really excited to share it with all of you. I gotta say a big thank you to Google that sent this package over. Let's check this out. Part of the channel is gamer tech, and this for me is totally new, but I'm excited to share this with you because we have an Instagram. I don't know if you follow me, but if you don't, we take cool shots of VR. We share some news over there, stuff with you too. And this is hopefully gonna open up our field to maybe more vlogs, more capabilities when I need to go out and John isn't with me to videotape stuff because I don't know how to work the video camera. <laughs> oh my goodness, Team Pixel. <laughs> we hope you love your limited edition Google Pixel collection. Oh my gosh. Okay, so these are the boxes. This, let me let me show you, show you the presentation here. We got the mirror there. Boom. That is fancy. I don't want to show you all the garbage on the floor in the mirror there, so we'll just we'll just kind of keep that to ourselves. I've been very interested in getting Google phones for a couple of reasons. They tend to win blind tests of picture quality. Their cameras are something they're really known for. And as much as I love my phone that I use all the time, how is this stuck to this? <laughs> the camera on it's not very good. And so it'll be nice to have something that I can also take shots with and not to worry about. I don't know much about their watch though. I got my Samsung gear. This is a couple years old now. What is this? Samsung Galaxy watch. I don't even know. I think it's the two or the three. It's like a couple years old. Wow. This is a lot of wristband here. Google. It's obviously wise that they have this like attached this. Oh, <laughs> so it doesn't slip around in the box, but it's weird when you try and pull this out and it's like stuck to it. So this is their new 7 Pro. This actually is about to launch this week. 899, although I've seen some stuff on Instagram, it looks like you could get it $200 off or something. Still, they are basically trying to undercut all of their competitors with this phone, make it a little bit lower price, but still with amazing specs. If you wanna get a full phone review by someone who really knows phones, MKBHD just dropped the video and said this is actually gonna be his daily driver for a while. So that means a lot. Ooh, ooh. I don't know if you're gonna be able to capture this. There's like a gear on the screen and every time it taps that other thing that it's moving, you can feel the haptics in the phone and it feels like a lot different than just a normal vibration. Feel that, feel that, feel that hit. Huh. <laughs> it's different. It doesn't feel like your normal just vibrates. It's, just, it's like a, it's like a real, Hit. That thing's surprisingly light too. The whole form factor is supposed to be sleek and smooth. They obviously don't make folding phones, which you know I love folding phones, but I have a separate channel phone, which is actually this really crappy old Samsung. So this is gonna replace that. That wants a SIM card. That wants to pair to a watch. I'm gonna do all that off camera. I'm gonna learn a little bit about this and come back to you, show off the camera, show off some shots and tell you a little bit more about this phone as I learn some more. So we'll hit you back soon. After several days with the Google Pixel 7 Pro and the Google Watch, we're here to talk about some thoughts. I do want to make it clear, this is going to be more of a first impressions. John and I actually have to take off for LA, so I'm not going to be able to do a really in-depth full review. And if you found this video because you've, and you've never found this channel before, we're not phone reviewers by nature. We do a lot of virtual reality tech and gamer tech, so it is something new. So the perspective that you're getting is someone who uses their phone all the time as a YouTuber, obviously for phone uses, but not someone who reviews tons of phones. Keep that in mind. The phone feels really good. Everything on it feels really snappy. Everything you do, it feels very intuitive, especially for a phone that's not considered the cream of the crop. I used to have an S22 Ultra Plus, and this phone, you definitely feel that there's some things about it that pale, but it feels like it keeps up. Beyond the overall, we'll talk about some of the external first. So the phone, when you have it, especially the color combination they sent me, it feels very premium. It looks very premium. Even compared to some of the top phones in the market, I would say this is one of the best looking phones when you look at it. One of the first things you notice is as you go to hold it, the sides, the way they made them, are extremely slippery. Like I, even in a few days of testing, did not trust myself at all. Having this phone outside without a case, I was always worried when I took it out, I was like two handing it and holding on it. I was always worried I was gonna drop it. And that's something that I haven't noticed with a lot of other phones I have. Something about this beveled edge here with the metal, it's just even, I'm not like barely holding it. I'm holding it somewhat tight and I still feel like it's slipping down in my hand when I do that. This ridge on the back is kind of nice because you'll notice your finger sometimes kind of lands there to help hold up that weight, but it's big enough that in my hand, it doesn't feel great to do. It doesn't feel really natural to have my finger there, where if it was the seven, not the pro, maybe I'd feel like, oh, that's just right. The screen gets incredibly bright. When it's all the way at the top, 
You don't ever have a problem seeing this, whether you're outside, inside, it's just a really bright screen. But there is something about it I wanna mention that I actually haven't heard in anybody else talking about this phone. I've went through every setting, every forum I could find. I can't find a setting to fix this. The phone is almost like it has a mild blue light filter on at all times. On my regular phone, if I look at the Gmail icon, the white around it is clearly white with maybe even a tiny bit of blue. Everything on this phone always looks like just a shade of yellow. That might be something they built in to help your eyes, which I kept, I went through color correction settings, I went through everything, so I kept trying to find a way. I thought I gotta be able to change it somehow. There doesn't seem to be a way. It just seems like the screen, the panel, is always a little bit yellower than what I'm used to. It's got fingerprint sensor in the screen. Some people have said because it's optical and not ultrasonic, it's a little slower. I didn't really notice that issue at all because I set up the fingerprint, I set up the face ID, and between those two and the fact that I also usually have smart lock, where if my watch is within range, it unlocks. I never had a problem like trying to get the phone open and feeling like it was taking too long. It was very snappy for me. I knew even before getting the Pixel that Pixels were known for their cameras. As someone who takes pictures on my phone, obviously for Instagram or just for memories and stuff, I'm nowhere near a professional photographer or even a wannabe photographer. I just do it for myself. And that was something that I was actually really impressed about the camera on this phone. It does a lot for you. If I have a, my phone out and I'm taking a picture of something in the distance and then I see a nice flower and I think, oh, I wanna take a picture of that. If you get in close, it switches modes automatically, which is something really good for someone like me because I'm not someone who wants to mess with all the camera settings, but it has settings on the screen. So if I did wanna change the color temperature or the brightness or whatever the heck this button is, <laughs> again, I'm not a photographer, it has those levels for people who are wannabe photographers, you know, wannabe Instagram photographers with their phones. You can change everything you want to, but it does the work for me that I don't wanna do when I'm taking pictures. I wanna take my phone out, take a picture, and I wanna have it look good. This does that. Even when it's pretty dark out, you can see some photos here that I took outside with no extra lighting when it was nighttime. It captures a lot more than you'd expect. The one thing that it does, it takes a couple seconds. It tells you hold the phone still, but I love that this phone does all that for me. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to take bad photos. And of course, the one feature that people are really excited about, you can unblur any photo in your Google library with AI use, and that is pretty wild. Because even if you have an old photo that you kept and you were like, oh, it was my only photo I got at this concert, but it was kind of blurry, you might have the opportunity to use the AI and improve it now. It's not perfect, but it's something. The 7 Pro is $900, although I've been seeing a lot of things ever since I got one. Of course, I'm seeing ads for it. $200 off if you do this, or $200 off if you do that. Weirdly, here in America, a lot of people don't really think about phone prices that much. I know in other countries, people sometimes buy their phones outright ahead of time. Most cell phone carriers here will just add it monthly to your plan or give you some sort of deal where phone costs, they're not a huge bearing on what phone you get anymore. And it's why a lot of people here have some of the coolest phones out there. There's a big difference between, you know, having to pay $27 a month or $13. $1,500 up front for a phone. So you don't really factor in price, but even having owned an S22 Ultra Plus, I feel like this doesn't feel, what would it have been, $500 less than that phone was at launch. This feels like it keeps up really well. And then lastly, if you are an Android user already, it's gonna feel really natural to you to switch to this phone, even if you've been with the Samsung all along. You can even plug this in or use Wi-Fi. It transfers all your apps over. Basically, all you have to do is re-log into all of them. So they make phone changing really easy. It used to be when you got a new phone, you were gonna have to relearn everything about it. Nowadays, it's not that hard. I really like that about phones. General overview of the phone there. Let's talk about the watch. As a smartwatch user, I really only use my watch for a couple of things, honestly. Tracking steps and activity, using it to catch my notifications if I have my phone put away somewhere, or sometimes reply or clear them, and obviously to tell the time. This watch obviously does all those things as even a Fitbit would pretty much do these days. I'm not really someone who utilizes a smartwatch to its fullest potential. That said, when I first put this thing on, my first impression of it compared to the Samsung that I'm used to is it felt significantly lighter on my wrist. And I actually really like that about it. It comes with a stock silicone band. For those of you who are avid step trackers with this thing, I've gotta say there is something really odd about it. Google owns Fitbit. And several years ago, a friend of mine who had a Fitbit wanted to get a smartwatch and was asking me about them. And I had a spare Samsung that I let them borrow. And they said, man, I don't like this thing at all because I get way less steps with it. And so when I saw that the Fitbit name was on here, I thought, okay, I wonder if I'm gonna see any sort of discrepancy. So the first day, I had to charge up the Google Watch. I had already gotten a thousand steps on my Samsung watch by then. It took me like two hours before they were already caught up with each other. In another hour, the Google Watch was 400 steps ahead. So I took it off, I set it down for a while, got them back to even. And by the end of that day, I had 2,500 more steps on the Fitbit Google Watch 
than I did on my Samsung. And I even went as far as switching off hands every few hours to try and see if there was some discrepancy that was causing it. Maybe it's because I'm right-handed, maybe I'm reaching for stuff. It seems to be that this watch is just super sensitive. Reach for something and grab something, that might be a step. You take a couple quick steps in your kitchen, not very far, kind of soft steps, it registers them. My Samsung never catches those. And looking around online, people have said the same thing, switching from Apple watches, Fitbits, or this watch just really finds a lot of steps, which may not be a bad thing, but if you're someone who's like, I have a 10 or a 15, 20,000 step goal a day, and you switch to this, you're gonna be getting there a lot easier and you're probably gonna be getting a lot less activity out of it. So that actually was a big deal to me. Overall, I can say, the watch is at least accurately recording steps though. When you go on a walk, check what both watches were at and I would count my steps. I walked hundred steps, check the watches. I walked 300, check the watches 500. It tracked them really well in that circumstance, but it's like your little pitter patters around the house and stuff that it seems to pick up tons of steps out of nowhere. And even today, I put these both on at zero steps this morning. It's not even noon and I've got 3,934 on the Google, 3,073 on the Samsung. That's a thousand step difference before noon. Some other details about the watch, it obviously is gonna do everything you need as a smartwatch. For me, it pops up notifications, but they did this weird addition where they added this twist knob on the side, which I thought would be kind of cool, but in practice, I'm never using it. If I pull up notifications, I'm swiping up and down on the actual watch face, and that might be because I'm used to doing that on my Samsung, but I just found that this seemed unnecessary. If I'm holding the watch and playing with things, it's really easy to turn it, but when you actually have this on, it becomes very awkward to try and get your hand far enough out of the way to get a good grip on this, to where you just end up kind of running your finger up and down on it, and then why am I not just running my finger up and down on the screen? Watch has a flashlight mode, which pretty much all smartwatches do. I took that outside in the dark, and it was fine, but if you're trying to use it, it's use your phone. Obviously your phone's got a way better flashlight on it. 350 on a watch, smart watches cost a lot and you can do a lot with them if you are. But me personally, I'm someone that if I hadn't gotten one on a deal before, or if I hadn't gotten this one sent to me, I would probably be using more of a fitness band style watch. It's overkill for what I need for it. And so the price to you, you can justify it if you're gonna use everything on it. But if you're like me, there's probably other options you could go for. So overall, what's gonna happen with this phone to me? Well, I keep a separate channel from phone from my personal phone. Helps me keep track of different calls, emails, business stuff. This will become that full-time and this will become my full-time photography phone if I need to do a quick vlog somewhere, if I need to take an Instagram photo, if I just wanna put something on my story. This definitely takes the cake as far as photos, videos, and just being easy to use for that. Full-time, that's what's gonna be, although I'm gonna put a case on this thing first thing today because I'm ter I was terrified the whole time I was gonna drop it and smash it. I haven't seen a drop test on these, but I don't feel confident. It's my first experience with a Pixel and so far it's been really positive. It feels like any other Android, it feels good. It gets the job done like phones mostly do these days, it does seem intuitive. It seems like it's helping you. The Google Assistant's always there for you. And I really like that about it. So what do you think out there? There's still not that many people I know that own Pixels. It's still pretty much, at least in America, Samsung or iPhone. That's pretty much the whole battle. I'm over here with the Motorola like a weirdo, but. I just love this phone. I can't explain it. It's not very fast. It's not a flagship camera, but the form factor and the way this fits in your pocket, I just love this phone. I can't wait till we see Apple and maybe some better Samsungs than the Fold start doing more with folding. But I'd love to hear your thoughts out there in the comments. I wanna say one more thank you to Google for hitting us up and sending us to this. The Google Watch will be replacing my Samsung full time. I love how it feels on my hand. I love the lightweight. It's great. I'm gonna be putting this thing away for good. And then this will be my full time channel phone. So thank you so much for coming out today. Tell me in the comments what you think about this. Do you wanna see more stuff about phones? I like phones, but I'm not like a avid phone tech person that knows every little thing about them, but keep sharing these kind of perspectives with you as to what an average person really wants from their phone. But thank you, and I will see you in another reality.